Hello everybody. Um, I perform in a uh, band that plays uh, music from the Middle Ages. And uh, as part of our strive to be authentic, uh, I uh, built a few instruments that were supposed to be used uh, for performing with our music. Uh, we play uh, compositions that uh, come from around the 11th century up to the uh, 17th, so a bit later than the Middle Ages, uh, including Renaissance and a few folk tunes. And um, one of the instruments, I, I usually perform on the, the fiddle, the VA, uh, a viol, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm originally a violin player, so I take care of the strings in our band. And uh, I also play a bit of lute, uh, and I thought that it would be nice to have some other types of instruments too. So, um, one of the common instruments of the Middle Ages that were played on strings were the uh, sitter, or psaltery. Um, I'm not really into sitter music, but um, I really like the hammer dulcimer. And there are some uh, indications that it was used in the late Middle Ages. So I built this instrument myself. Uh, we didn't end up using it that much uh, in the band because it's not um, really handy. It's heavy and we usually play outdoors uh, in locations where we uh, uh, need to move around a lot. And as you can see, it's a bit dusty. <sighs> So it hasn't been used a lot, but I, I uh, tuned it up uh, uh, lately so to try it out to see. It's supposed to be played with um, a hammer. Um, this is an Iranian mesarab, which is used for uh, santur music. This picture. Uh, is from uh, Cluny and it states about 1500. As you can see uh, the lady is playing uh, a hammer dulcimer. It has the, uh, the epignose shape and has no bridges on uh, in the center like the one I made. Here we have an assortment of uh, different uh, iconography showing hammer dulcimers. On the top left we have uh, something from the early 17th century. It is trapezoid in shape and uh, at this point apparently it has no bridges in the center so it functions much like a psaltery or a sitter. We should note that um, just because it is depicted like this is not necessarily the same as that it was made like this. Illustrators uh, are often clueless as to what they are actually showing. Um, when you look at the uh, top right you have what is what actually looks like a lot like a modern hammer dulcimer. Again it's the pig nose it has pecs on the sides like the santor and it has two bridges uh, in the middle like I made it. So here we have solid evidence that the modern type of uh, hammer dulcimer actually did exist. This is about uh, 1490s. On the bottom we have something from the earlier um, 1400s also showing uh, various forms of uh, hammer dulcimers. And um, let me tell you a bit about how it was made and the, what the consideration I had when building it. So it's um, it has uh, bass strings on the right and treble strings on the left. And uh, as you can see, I have a uh, mono bridge here and I have single bridges on the left. This isn't a... Um, uh, this isn't systematic at all, as you can see, and I'll explain why. Um, 
when building it, I uh, try a few different things around just to see if I could get it to work properly. And uh, the way this instrument works is that you have strings that go over the bridge and uses the bridge and you had strings that go under and I just found out that um, when moving uh, the bridge around the soundboard uh, my measurements for where the strings were supposed to pass through were a bit off so sometimes the strings would hit the uh, bridge this is not good at all so I uh, ended up using um, single bridges because I could move them a bit or around a bit more um, so that uh, I didn't have to do this but this is of course a uh, problem with uh, the design the original design I had you can also see that I use a nail here to keep a string in place which is of course not ideal at all um, why did I actually build this um, well, when you go to medieval fairs in Europe, um, there are some hammered dulcimers around. Um, most are modern productions, American folk instruments, sort of. And uh, other times it's just the um, Iranian santor. Um, and uh, that's okay for some, but um, the argument for using these instruments, or at least the uh, santor, is that... Uh, um, the musical culture of uh, the Middle East has not changed at all and represents something uh, authentic and uh, the same must have been used in Europe. I don't buy that argument at all. Uh, it's a bit um, chauvinistic to assume that a culture of the country is just static and um, there are no evidence that it was actually used uh, the, the Santor was used in Europe like that. Um, the evidence we do have for this is that uh, it's either the trapezoid shape like this or it has the uh, bull nose, pig nose uh, shape where it uh, it has a semicircle on the side. I'll show a picture I hope. And it and uh, for this model, I have put uh, the uh, pins for the strings on the top and tuning packs on the top too. Um, if I were to make another one, I would put the packs on the side, like on the Centaur. And the reason for that is, if you look at the way the strings are positioned here, uh, the break angle is not deep enough on some of the strings, uh, so they they don't uh, go uh, far down into the notch here, and that's why I use the nail here to keep this string in place. Otherwise, it uh, would start to move that way too far. Uh, well, as I said, I built this um, instrument to be authentic. And uh, I was a bit naive at that time, it's about 10 years ago, uh, as I'll show now. Um, the the uh, instrument is made of maple veneered with mahogany. And um, these types of wood are not native to Northern Europe and were definitely not used in the medieval times, at least not mahogany. The uh, soundboard is uh, spruce. Uh, a native sort I think. Um, when I built it I had um, some posts like on a violin but when I tuned it up the the soundboard was start to buckle down from the pressure of the string so I instead put some rails uh, along. I think you can watch it through the sound hole there you can see something light wood that's a rail that goes along the length and it's and it keeps uh, the soundboard up. It also increased the volume of the instrument dramatically, I would say. 
so it was a good thing. Um, it is too heavy to lug around, so we didn't get to use it a lot. But it is actually a nice thing for medieval type music. Uh, if it is used properly, it should probably be used for melody or some simple chords, uh, fifths or something like that. If you look at the iconography, this bridge arrangement was not uh, universally adopted by musicians. Uh, for one, um, it looks like the strings were just attached at the sides and uh, basically played like a uh, psaltery, a sitter with hammers. Um, there are, a, I have found at least one example where it uses bridges like this. Um, how they were arranged we don't really know but considering that uh, the perfect fifth was um, in vogue during the Middle Ages there are some things that we can do with it. On the, the Iranian Santor you would place the triple bridges so that you have uh, a perfect fifth when you play uh, one side of the string and the other. So, mm -hmm. uh, and this means that you actually have a greater number of notes play if you tune it up like that. But as you can see, the uh, sound hole here um, makes it impossible to move these bridges into the correct position. As I mentioned before, the problem with the break angle is actually seen here. Um, I have two bridges here that uh, need to be moved in a certain way as to not collide with the bass strings that come in here. And they need to be moved really far left. But this produces a problem with the break angle as you can see on this on this string it doesn't actually go into the notch it lies just just over so that's a problem so it doesn't it doesn't have the same uh, sound as the other uh, the other bridge has but So it has that uh, Eastern European chimbalum sound, I think, and I think it's really nice. And the sound is also pretty loud, uh, um, at least compared to the uh, plucked psaltery I tried in Greenwich at the early music festival. Um, if it had been more portable, I would probably have used it a lot more. I'm thinking about building uh, a plucked psaltery like the ones, the bullnose ones, or some of the ones that we see uh, in the Canticas de Santa Maria, which has a lot of illustrations of uh, medieval instruments that were actually used in Europe. So this is my uh, homemade hammered dulcimer. I'm really happy about how it turned out, but uh, it is still sort of just a prototype instrument. Thank you for watching.